So this is my review on the pair of Denon DSB 250BT. It's a bit hit and miss. So obviously the main thing is the sound. The sound is good. It's great. Probably not an equivalent sound in something of this package. And of this package, I mean as hand holdable and as you know reasonably light as that, but with a really meaty, thick, I would say, you know, powerful sound. The sound has got a, a thick quality to it. In other words, it's, it's not very agile. So if you like music, what requires quick decaying sounds, something that's quite fast, upbeat. Obviously, if it's, you know, a lot of thumping going on, that's going to be a great speaker, but it's not very agile. It hasn't got a lot of finesse, I would say. It does, it's, it does seem to be all about the low end. And it's not that it goes really, really deep, but the bass that it has is really thick and it's a real thump. So you, 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 can, you really hear the beat of the sound. For me, the weak part of the speaker is vocals. And it's because it's a very th thick sound and it's very low end weighted. Obviously, I guess a lot of the power of the speaker is for that low end and it's muddying the mids, it's muddying the highs. So you're not getting um, a delicate sound in any way. You'll get, you're not getting the definition in the high end, something that I would like. And the result of that is vocals do not stand out. And I would describe it as, it sounds like the singer is in line with the musicians as opposed to vocals are breaking free of the musicians and, and come, coming forward on stage. Um, that's what I like. I like the, the vocals to stand out. So for me, it's a miss in that, in that area. There's nothing like it in this size, in this package for that bass. It, it is a really thick, pleasing sound. But I have to say for me, it lacks that sweetness, it lacks finesse. If, because at the end of the day is being put forward as you know a audiophiles speaker and um, and and it is but in the sense of that an audiophile is probably more analytical you are missing nuances in the sound so i think it's a great fun speaker this is a for me would be a great beach companion one on each side because the bass that you're getting which you don't get for instance in the jbl charge 3 when i say you don't get it you do get a slightly lower end in the jbl charge 3 but you don't get the obvious thump so you, and you get that all the way up to almost 100%. So from, yeah, it, it, it's right, greatly reduced at like 90%, but less so than something like the JBL Charge 3. So you, you do have that bass all the way to maximum, something that you can hear, but, and that's something you, that I don't get in my uh, pair of JBL Charge 3s. But if I compare a pair of these to a pair of my JBL Charge 3, because to me, that's what it's all about playing these in stereo. I like both of them. So playing the, the Denons in stereo, I, I like the really obvious beat. You do get a fantastic stereo image, I have to say. And it, it is like a mini hi-fi. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not cheap. You're talking like 320, 330 pound for the two, but it, it is a really enjoyable sound. It, it, it does become something that's an alternative to setting up your, your hi-fi. But then I compare it directly to the JBL Charge 3s and the, it's a much thinner sound on the Charge 3s, but that lends itself for the vocals coming out in a, in a more enjoyable way, more definite. And don't forget the JBL Charge 3 is not known for its high end, but it, it is obviously hearing the two A and B together that the JBL Charge, the vocals on that are, are defined. They stand out from the rest of the music, whereas in the Denons, it's very much, the vocals are very much part of the music. So I, I can understand if someone says, oh, it makes the JBL Charge 3 sound like a kitchen radio. I've heard quoted. And while I completely disagree, they are two different things. And, but I understand because on a quick listen, you've got a thick sound like all the music's there on the Denon. And that's the first thing that hits you when you are A-being. But if you have a prolonged listen, you're getting a faster sound and more agile sound with JBL Charge 3. Yes, it's down to not having a thick sound overall, your impression is there is very much less body in the JBL Charge 3s, and that's what these speakers are all about, the body and the thickness and the full bottom end. But to me, I kind of, I, I like both for different reasons, and I don't think one replaces the other. So if you've got JBL Charge 3s and you think, whoa, shall I upgrade to this? It may be an upgrade to you, but to me, they just, 
they go with different types of music and especially if your focus is on the vocals the vocals is to me the, the pour in so I mean, it doesn't have a well-defined high end it doesn't have a sweet sound it's a powerful f fun sound um, it's a great party speaker but and i have to but i do say it sounds fantastic as a stereo pair you get a fantastic stereo image it's just that the vocals don't pull clear the rest of the music so that's my overview i have issues um about the usability for instance <laughs> um a when you to use it in any meaningful sense when you turn it on and that's the first thing you don't know if you actually hit cor correctly hit these uh, buttons or not it's uh, there's no real feedback and it, it does take a firm push if you are a some you know a small child i would not recommend these speakers because you're going to have problems pressing these buttons so usability first thing it's on now how do you know it's on like on the jbls there'll be a light saying power light on i've got no idea if that's on or off um, and while if you leave it, leave it for about 15 minutes, it will go into sleep. So it's not going to stay on. But still, I like to know if my speaker's on or off. Other than this, you hear the sound and there's a, the lights flash initially when you turn it on and tell you the power level. I don't know if that's on or off. But the problem is you have to physically turn the speaker to maximum volume. You know it's maximum volume when all five buttons, all five lights are flashing. That's the only way you know. There's no sound. And if you don't, you lose a lot of the bass when you try and sync it with your phone. So you have to use these at full volume set on the speaker each and every time you start up. There's, so there's no, there's no lights. There's nothing telling me what's happening. Now, I, I want to know the status of the speaker, but I don't know if it's on or off just by a quick look. Now, I have a pair. So the idea is that I, I'm playing them in stereo. So it is a little bit hit and miss. It's just not an easy solution. I have to also, I must say, there's no app. There is no app to do anything at all. As far as I know, it may be out there, but certainly on a quick search, I couldn't find one. So there's nothing you can actually go in and change in the settings, which seems amazing, doesn't it, uh, this day and age? Um, as I said in my unboxing, Bluetooth 4.1, not Bluetooth 4.2. Uh, straight USB micro for charging. By the way, the, the, the charging is in here. <laughs> I can't even get the flat button. That's not easy. It's not easy. All right, it's so flap open. So you've got your JBL, you've got your, um, not your JBL, that would be weird. You've got your USB micro and your auxiliary in. Um, that's that's your lot on this speaker, but uh, no USB C. It's not it's not cutting edge. So you know, along with not having the the app. Anyway, so that speaker's on, but I don't know, do I? But I'm not can't remember. I put it on five minutes ago, and I want to sync the two speakers. Is it on or off? So you have to press the power button. And nothing happens on the side you're pressing. You then have to look on the front uh, to see if anything lights. So I know it's on because the power lights are flashing. Now, I don't know what volume it was on because it's telling me, so just to check, yeah, it's on five lights for that. But I have to now pair it with my other Denon. You can't power that on till this one is on and paired with your phone. So that's now on, paired with my phone. I'm now gonna turn this one on. It was, it, you got to really hold it. Now it's not coming on. Now I have to put them into sync mode. So I have to hold the Bluetooth button down and I have to hold it for six. Yes, I, I said that right, six seconds. And you'll hear two sounds. And sometimes it's not the right sound and it doesn't sync. So I'm listening for the first single beep and then three beeps after six seconds. It's now in pairing mode, but sometimes it doesn't do that. It, and I have to turn it on and turn it on to get it into this. Now I have to go on my second one. Now they have to pair with each other and you'll get another sound. Boom. And I have to tell you, that is a hell of a sharp sound. If you have that near your ear, it's ear piercing. But 
At least I now, now know that they are synced. But if I came back, I wouldn't know, would I? Because there's nothing to indicate they're in pairing mode. I'd have to start playing. And that's the thing, there's absolutely nothing on here. It, it's, I don't know, it's what you would call minimalist. And maybe that, that was the, uh, the idea. So that's them now paired, ready for stereo. So before I play some um, comparison clips to give you different ideas, different comparisons, I just want to go over uh, some of the specs that you may have missed in my unboxing. So it's IP67 rated, so that's completely dustproof and can be submerged in one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. If you've got an iPhone, you can use the phone button to talk to Siri, but use, you can't use it on Android. Battery life rated at 13 and a half hours and charging is said to be three and a half hours. I have to say, uh, it was quicker than that for me and the power lights are not accurate. So when it was dead and I started charging and it went to one light, it was like five minutes later, it was on three lights. And then it was an hour to four and then not long after that, five lights. <laughs> so uh, power lights, I uh, don't seem to be that accurate, certainly not when you are charging, and it does seem to take uh, less than three and a half hours, but perhaps it wasn't fully discharged, although it wasn't playing when I first uh, opened it and tried to play. They are 40 millimeter drivers. They are said to be oversized proprietary drivers. Makes no sense to me. They're 40 millimeter drivers. How does that make them oversized? Okay, they're proprietary. They are their own drivers, apparently, although I'm pretty sure they must have bought them in. But anyway, uh, oversized. <laughs> any size you could say was oversized, but it's the right size for the speaker, isn't it? I don't know, that seems weird. Rated at two times 13 and a half watts, so for a total of 27 watts. But the actual, you'll hear in some of the clips, I was a bit disappointed. I was expecting these to go louder, two of these to go louder than my extreme. And I don't have the extreme anymore to make an AB, but they didn't seem to be. Um, it seems to be a lot of that power is used by the low end. So it, music that has, you know, mid boost has high end boost certain types of music it is actually louder on the jbl charge threes and on the flip fours with certain genres that are high end slanted which surprised me because the actual rating is lower i know it's only a guide and it doesn't really mean anything but i was i thought it would go i thought to, they do go loud but i thought they may go louder than they do given the 54 watts total didn't seem to be louder than the 40 watt extreme it supports aptx low latency which is good if you can hear a difference so i'm going to compare them to the, my, my charge three flip four and the with the denon now the denon is basically more expensive and you may wonder why i'm comparing it with these two other speakers it's because the, they're the ones i've got and actually these are speakers people are asking about compared to the charge three and the flip four and uh it's kind of a mixed story, but overall you can say that has a bigger thump and a thicker sound on the Denon. Both JBL speakers are a thinner sound, but the Charge 3 has better mids and the JBL Char Flip 4 has the, the high end boost. It's very, very clear with it, but you know, it's, it's a much smaller speaker and uh, normally it's cheaper. Surprisingly, there isn't that much difference in the maximum volumes depending on what kind of music you're playing because obviously that, that favors highs, mids, lows. Except to say that the JBLs will greatly reduce at, or to non-existent bass at the maximum levels, whereas the, the Denon will still have bass even at maximum, although it is it does reduce. But I'm gonna start by playing, because it's interesting, the, the sound curve as you go up in the volume steps. So I'm actually going to start from 7% up to 100%, 15 steps, this is what you will get. This this is the shape of the sound you will get with the Denon. I've obviously all the tracks. I'm not starting at all. I can't hear it to maximum. That's how they're recorded. They were all recorded at the same gain, and then I've normalised them so you can hear exactly the difference in in the sound.
So these are the charts showing exactly what happens as you go up through the volume steps. And it is quite interesting. You can see exactly what's going on. So it does have this loudness adjustment at the lower frequency range, but it's pretty decent. It's not out of whack with uh, the rest of the track, but it does have one small effect, which is for me, uh, it's not ideal. It does, so the, you know, it's got this upper bass uh, warmth thickness to it, which is a slightly boosted and it has the effect of muddying the vocals a little bit to my ears. And it means it, the vocals aren't very well projected. So I like to hear the vocals stand out and I would just describe it as the difference between a singer standing in line with musicians and a singer moving forward of the musicians. So it, it stands out and it, it's projected more from music, something I particularly like. I'm, it's a great speaker. It's well judged. It's just for me, the weak spot is how it handles vocals. So as you go up the frequency range, the, the vocals do start to project out, but, but not until around the halfway mark. And you can see exactly what happens as you go up the frequency range. Don't worry too much or any, don't worry at all about 50 hertz and below. That's going to be noise that's been boosted as I've uh, normalized all the tracks so that uh, they can be comp compared to each other. Obviously, I'm starting from really very quiet at 7% going all the way up to 100%. And then I'm normalizing the tracks to be equal volume. So the noise is going to be boosted more in the lower volume range. So as you go up, you can see how the mids start rising up and the bass starts falling away till you get to right you know, 90% above and it's the bass is really uh, falling away a lot. There is a sweet point. So if you look at the actual track itself, you can see the the bass there and the mid, the, obviously the vocal range is going to be between 100, 500, can go up to 3000 or more, but most of the vocals are between 100 and 300. So that's the important bit. So they are projected in the original track, but always below that uh, upper bass. But as you can see at higher volumes, <laughs> it's the other way around. There is a sweet point where it's most accurate. I think it's around 46%, 50%. So this, at this point, at 66% is already not really in line with the original track but you're still getting a nice dollop of bass. It starts falling away at that point. So 70% above the, the bass starts falling away, but 40% to around 60%, I think is the sweet point. Um, especially if you want, like I do, I want the vocals being projected. So it's going to be on at least 50% volume for me, but it, it, it is nice at the lower volumes to still have a full bass. It's just that it, it muddies the vocals and you know, it is like a singer either being in line with the musicians as opposed to stepping forward and coming clear of the rest of the music. So I would describe it as being a little bit muddy. I'm saying it's a great little speaker, but for me, the weak point is definitely how it handles vocals. Um, and it's quite stark there as you step through the volume range, you can see that. Uh, the, the boost for, you know, upper mids are getting boosted and the bass is coming away. It's changing the nature of the sound. So now a comparison of how each one sounds as a single, starting at 50% and then also at maximum volume. Back to my pulse flat, we keep it real, no false rap. I got four cars and they all black, got four bras and they all that. We call that balling, doing this is my calling. Flow is so appalling, my phone off and she calls. Flat. We keep it real, no false rap. I got four cars and they all black. Got four bras and they all that. We call that calling. Doing this is my calling. Flow is so appalling. My phone off and she calling. I'm like, yeah, what it do? Penthouse, man, what a view. Fall back as I'm coming through with my whole team. They coming too, that's real. Shoot my pulse flat. We keep it real, no false rap. I got four cars and they all black. Got four bras and they all that. We call that calling. Doing this is my calling. Flow is so appalling. My phone So it was obvious the thin sound you are getting with the Flip 4 and the Chancery compared to the Denon. The Denon has an obvious, obviously 
thicker sound. The one thing that did surprise me was the difference in the bass between the Denon and the Charge 3. The Charge 3 having a better lower bass, but the Denon having substantially more upper, lower upper bass. So the bass is, has a really different shape to it. So the Denon doesn't actually go lower than the Charge 3, but certainly hides it well. And the other thing you notice is on the Denon you've got the spike in the high end completely missing on the Charge 3. Flip 4 has the brighter high end, that's also obvious compared to the Denon and to the Charge 3, but doesn't have the, the base of the other two. This uh, next clip is going to show you what is going to let you hear the difference between the stereo pairs. So two flips, fours, two J JBL Charge threes, and two Denons. Uh, this clip is going to be what you, you know, <laughs> if you're one of the loads and loads of people who don't have uh, JBL charges or JBL speakers at all, a lot of that's, this <laughs> review is probably of no interest to you at all. But we'll, what will be of interest is how does one Denon 250 sound against a pair of Denons? Is it worth doubling your money to get it? And although, as you will hear, the sound does change, what I can't really get over is how fantastic it sounds when you can really separate, you know, a reasonable, uh, quite a distance, the two speakers. The stereo image you get makes up for what you will hear is the loss in the high end. But you do gain a, a bit more bass thump, although you lose some of that, the clarity in the high end. You do gain a bit, which is not quite the same with the JBL Chargers 3, where it, it's the sound. It's the stereo image that makes it sound really, really great, but you do lose a lot, a lot of the sound when you start hooking up in pairs, whereas it, it's not the case other than the high end you do lose. Anyway, so this is uh, my comparison. You 
It's a great, great speaker. It's not the holy grail. If that's what maybe you might be thinking, but it's definitely, you know, I would say it's definitely best in class, but doesn't make it the best speaker for you. It's gonna be down to your tastes. So there isn't anything like it for the size and the package you get. There are issues on usability, no app. So to be honest, I haven't asked them, but I'm not, quite sure how you're supposed to update it. Maybe I hook it up to the computer. I, d I haven't actually tried it. Uh, maybe USB over the computer, you download the firmware or something, but uh, no easy way to do it via the app. So usability, I don't like, you know, it takes quite a force to press these buttons. There's no there's no feedback. Uh, it's not the greatest design, but it's, an, it's a nice shape. But whether this is gonna be the best speaker for you is gonna depend on your taste. If you like bass heavy, but not necessarily fast music, it's gonna sound fantastic and it's gonna be best in class. But if you like vocals, if you like a sweet sound, you may well be disappointed. It doesn't have that finesse. But uh, if you're thinking of buying one versus two, I would say absolutely get two, because you will have a mini hi-fi. It does sound fantastic, albeit, uh, your vocals are not going to stand out and they're not going to have the clarity, uh, the definition that maybe I was expecting or would have made this an even better sp speaker. So overall, you know, I highly recommend it, but it's not for everybody. This is all about power and a meaty sound. And you've got to really like that over your vocals standing out for this to be a good speaker for you. For me, I'm probably not going to, I'm probably am going to keep the JBL chargers and I know I understand when people say it makes it sound like a kitchen radio. That's a quick listen, and that's not really being fair to the Charge 3. It is thin, but what you do get is an airiness. If you hook up a pair of JBL Charge 3s in stereo, you're getting an airiness around the vocals. And it, to me, it is a lot about the vocals here, because I do like to hear my vocals stand out. And they won't stand out from that because it's very thick and muddy, the sound. Whereas, because it's a thin sound, you may think you're, you're, lose, you're missing a lot of the music, and not really. It's just that it, it is a thin sound, 
it's an airy sound. So on an AB comparison, it's not really fair because they are two different things. So I don't think the Denon's replaced the Charge 3s. And anyway, the Denon, is, you can get great prices on the JBL Charge 3s now. I know people are saying this is a kitchen radio and I know I keep repeating that. I think that is, un I think that is unfair. A lot of people do like the Charge 3s and I know that a lot of people like speakers that you will say oh, are not great speakers. But look, at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, it's a matter of taste. If you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. And, and whether it reproduces to, to any extent the original music is not here or there. If you enjoy it. I mean, if, you're, if your enjoyment is reproducing the original music, I can understand why you may not think much of the JBL charge, charges or the flips or any of the JBL uh, speakers. But that's only one element of, of listening. I mean, and then even then you're not reproducing exactly the sound, you're reproducing what the engineer wants you to hear. Let's face it, you hear someone singing with no amplification at all. It's a, it's a whole different story, isn't it? You hear someone singing uh, in the flesh. I, yeah, it's just my personal opinion, but I, I think this idea of getting back to the original recording is not my idea of music. Music is, yeah, I'd like to hear to an extent the original recording, but I have to enjoy it. Some recordings are terrible. It doesn't make it enjoyable. And if you use a, a thicker, muddier speaker like these, it does make the, the music sound a little bit better. Some, some of the older recordings, you know, from decades ago, will sound better on thicker speakers than a kitchen radio, apparently, like the JBL Charles 3. But that's just my opinion. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, as far as I'm concerned. And just to say again, I, I highly recommend these Denons. But be beware of usability issues. Beware of the particular sound. Um, and yeah, I guess the real thing about the Denons is you will still get bass for 0%, well, from 1% up to 100%, which you can't really say on these other speakers. But the sound curve that, that does change or as you steadily go up from 50% onwards, the, the vocals start um, coming out. Where below that, you know, you, you're losing some of the mids and highs, but the, the, the bass is still staying the same. So it, it's overwhelming the music to a certain extent. But yeah, I, I think it's a great speaker. I don't think you can get anything quite like it for the money, if that's your cup of tea. So I hope you got something out of that. Thanks for watching. UK.